Like and subscribe right now, or you're going to have terrible luck for the next week. Mythical sea creatures are commonplace in cultures around the world. They're painted as unusual in both appearance and abilities, and using the two, they can wreak considerable havoc for the people unfortunate enough to cross their paths. You've certainly heard of some of these creatures. The Kraken, for instance, comes to mind. For some reason, it's quite heavily referenced in popular culture topics like television and film. But it has other equally terrifying fears. In this video, we're going to explore some of the most common of these sea creatures that you may or may have not heard of. You're going to appreciate the fact that they're fictional because the thought of meeting any of them is outright terrifying. Number 10. Cetus In Greek mythology, Cetus might have referred to a dragon, a whale, a shark, or just a fish. It's most known in the feud between Poseidon and Andromeda's mother, Cassiopeia. According to myth, Cassiopeia had made a broad claim that her daughter, Andromeda, was the most beautiful among all the sea creatures, including Amphitrite, Poseidon's wife. This didn't sit well with the sea god, so he sent Cetus to devour Andromeda as a way of getting back at her mom. But she escaped at the very last minute when Perseus, who had come just from killing Medusa, chanced upon her chained to a rock. Cetus died when Perseus showed it Medusa's head, consequently turning it into stone. Other variations of the myth claim the Greek hero might have killed the creature by stabbing it. Number 9. Skyla In Greek mythology, Skyla was a six-headed monster that lived on one side of a narrow water channel, just opposite another monster called Cherbidus. The channel was so narrow that an attempt from getting away from Skyla would ultimately send sailors into the waiting mouth of the Cherbidus and vice versa. The first account of this monster was in the Odyssey poem by Homer. Here, the king of Ithaca, Adeus, has to go through the narrow strait inhabited by the two monsters. The king is advised by a witch to sail closer to Skyla instead of Cherbidus, since the former would only eat a few of his men. Cherbidus, on the other hand, would have destroyed the whole ship. Skyla wasn't as always a terrific creature, though. According to several accounts from different authors, she was born a beautiful nymph to probably Pateus as the mom and an unknown father. Here's where different theories come in as to how she ended up being one hideous sea creature. One involved the sea god Poseidon who was love-struck by Skyla. His wife Amphitrite got jealous and poisoned the spring where Skyla used to bathe, thus turning her into a monster. Another involved Glaucus and his lover Circe with Skyla undergoing the same fate under similar circumstances. Number 8. Charbidus Charbidus, as mentioned, was a close neighbor to Skyla on the opposite side of a narrow water passage. Unlike Skyla, Charbidus was more dangerous and would usually destroy entire ships rather than snacking off on a few sailors. She could swallow loads of water effectively, creating whirlpools that were detrimental to passing ships. As per Greek mythology, this was a result of a hex she had been put under by Zeus. This was after she helped her father Poseidon in his conflict with Zeus. Initially, Cherbidus was just flooding large areas of land with water as a way of getting back at her uncle Zeus. Of course, Zeus was pissed off, as he often gets, and captured his niece and chained her to the bottom of the seabed. He then proceeded to curse her with an uncontrollable thirst for the seawater. To quench it, Cherbidus had to drink from the sea at least three times a day. In some variations of the myth, the monster would belch out the water once she had drank it. Number 7. Umibuzu The Umibuzu was probably the most feared sea creature in Japanese folklore. It's described as being a big humanoid with a black body, a pair of large hollow eyes, and an eerie smile to boot. As it appeared when it was least expected, when the sea was calm and thus perfect for sailing. The Umibuzu would first cause a massive storm and waves that rendered the sea unsafe for sailors. It would then appear and either capsize the whole ship or smash the ship's hull. The monster would then claim the souls of the drowned sailors. But sometimes instead of sinking the ship, Umibuzu would demand a barrel from the crew. Using the container, it would scoop the seawater and pour it into the boat until it capsized. This was better since it offered an opportunity for the crew to trick the monster. They could simply give the Umibuzu a bottomless barrel so that he'd keep scooping water, offering them just enough time to make it to safety. Number 6. Surian According to a Scottish myth, the Surian had a unique ability to change its shape, something it used extensively in its hunting escapades. Just like any other creature of myths, 
The Syrian was huge, but unlike its mythical peers, it would contract itself, becoming small enough to be caught by an unsuspecting fisherman. Once it was aboard, it went back to its huge size, after which it would devour whoever caught it. And it didn't restrict its hunting grounds to the ocean. It hunted even on land, where it's thought to have gone after any available animal, including its own kind. Its sheer size made it a force to be reckoned with, such that it was said to feed on seven whales. That said, the appearance of the sea creature varies in different versions of the folktale. A popular text about Surian by Alexander Forbes describes the water-dwelling creature as both a large sea serpent and a dinosaur. That means the exact form or appearance of this creature is not exactly clear to the folktales. Number 5. Leviathan Leviathan isn't too new as compared to a majority of its other peers in this video. Well, the usage isn't always about a sea creature, but it's common nonetheless. As an English word, Leviathan is usually used in the context of something being very large, which is in direct reference to a mythical sea creature. In folk tales, the Leviathan is common in both Christianity and Judaism, although the creature has a unique interpretation in each of the religions. While it's termed as a sea creature, the specific descriptions of how the Leviathan looked vary considerably. According to some accounts, the sea monster is described as being dragon-like, covered in armored scales, and with a snake-like body. It also has sharp claws, rows of razor-sharp teeth, and can breathe fire. Other accounts simply describe it as whale-like, having a near-cylindrical body with fins. The actual meaning of the sea creature also varies with religious writings. In Judaism, God created both the male and female Leviathan on the fifth day. But fearing that the monsters might take over the world if they reproduce, he killed the female and preserved the meat for the righteous. In Christianity, Leviathan is viewed as an image of Satan, waging war against God's creation. Number 4. Sirens Sirens weren't your typical mythical sea creatures. That's a fun sentence to say. While most sea creatures were outright scary and would use their immense physical strength to cause destruction, the sirens were a bit laid back. They weren't so aggressive, at least not at the start. They were just some good-looking half-human and half-bird fairy creatures willing to offer a good time to sailors. But any sailor who got carried away with them never lived to tell the tale. With this beauty, their prime targets were sailors who've been at sea for some time. As such, they were easily swayed by the need for a woman's touch. To entice sailors, the sirens used their sweet voices to belch out melodious tunes, effectively convincing the seamen to head towards the rocks where their vessels will be marooned. The sailors themselves would jump into the waters, never to be seen again. When Odius was sailing back to Ithaca, he was given a heads up by Cirque about these deceivingly beautiful monsters. The only way of passing them was if none of the crew heard their song, so he advised his crew to block their ears with wax and instructed them to tie him to the mast. Number 3. Kraken The Kraken is quite a common theme in today's pop culture, gathering references in both DC and Marvel comics and other popular works of fiction. It's usually depicted as a giant octopus, with massive arms giving it an extraordinary ability to catching prey. The origins of the monster trace back to the Norwegian coast, where it's said to have been responsible for the sinking of countless ships. But vessels weren't the only target. It also fed on small fish. To attract them, it would pour out a part of its undigested food into the water. This worked well in attracting shoals of fish that the kraken would gorge itself with. The shoals would also attract fishermen, who would basically try to steal from the kraken. Of course, this really upset the monster and, as revenge, it caused massive whirlpools and followed this up by unleashing its massive arms to grab the ship. From that point, it'll be game over for both the ship and its passengers. Now it's time for today's best pick. Today's photo was sent to us by a subscriber. So if you come across a photo online and want to know more details about it, just send it over to us. You might even feature it in a future video. Number 2. Cthulhu This monster was created by American writer Howard Phillips Lovecraft. Famed for his weird and horror fiction, Cthulhu first came to be known in his short story, The Call of Cthulhu, published in 1928 in Weird Tales magazine. According to Lovecraft's description, the monster had an octopus-like head and a face full of feelers. It also had claws on both the hind and forefeet, and was endowed with narrow wings on its back. Cthulhu was hundreds of meters tall, and its arms and legs were human-like, except for their web nature and long claws. Away from the story, Cthulhu has been recreated in several games through the years, including several card games and first-person shooter bangers like Call of Duty Black Ops 3. 
most recent game to feature the monster is Smite, released in 2020, in which Cthulhu is a playable character. Before we move on, I've got a little challenge for you that'll take five seconds to complete. So here's the deal. You just leave a like on this video, smash that subscribe button, and hit the notification bell, and you'll get 25 years of amazing luck. Try it. It really works. Number 1. Calypso Wrapping up our video is a nymph from the Greeks, the beautiful Calypso known for her affair with the famed Greek hero, Odious. Their relationship started as soon as Odious landed on the Oegia Island, after which the goddess was immediately love-struck. She managed to trap him on the island for nearly seven years until Odious could have no more. He had a strong longing for his wife, Penelope, since he hadn't seen becoming stuck on the island. So he confided his frustration with the goddess Athena, who in turn divulged the concerns to Zeus. Athena requested Zeus to order Calypso to release Odious. Of course, Calypso didn't like it at first. She quipped about gods being too stuck up and not wanting goddesses to have affairs with mortals, but she eventually gave in on the demands. On the day she released Odious, she sent him off with bread, wine, and a raft. 